Hello everyone. In today's session, I wanted to show you how easy it is to enable single sign-on for all the admins that need to connect to the Velo Cloud Orchestrator. Obviously, you can manually define administrators in this tab, but the reality is if you're a um, mid to large size organization, uh, you're already using um, identity provider that streamlines the way that you allow people to log in in uh, different application types. Now for this example, uh, I'll be using um, Okta. I just uh, grabbed a free trial from their website. Uh, in about five minutes, I was, I was up and running. So really, really efficient. And I'll show you how easy it is to link both systems together. So first of all, we need to define VeloCloud as an app inside Okta. You won't find it in uh, this uh, well-known list, so you need to create it from scratch. It's a, a web platform, and we will be using uh, OpenID Connect. We click Create. We uh, give it a name. And then at this point, we are asked to provide a login redirect URI. And this we will get by going inside system settings, authentication, and shifting that from native to single sign-on. Before you do that and start configuring, make sure that you have a domain name set. I made all my configurations inside the authentication tab. I couldn't save it because I uh, never set a domain name. Uh, and then I have to basically hop in general information and then hop back to authentication and start my work from scratch. So good tip, make sure you have a, a domain name set. So once you click single sign on, uh, you're asked to uh, choose the identity provider that you are using. So as previously stated, Okta is not the only one that is uh, currently supported. And at the bottom, you'll find this redirect URL. So I'm going to copy that, go back here, paste it, and click Save. Now, once I do that, I need to shortly click Edit and click on the Refresh uh, Token option that is not selected by default. And then as I scroll down, I'll have a client ID and secret. So I'll copy that. Go back, client ID, the same for secret. And then the last thing I need is this OIDC well known config URL. So with Okta, they uh, tend to have the same format. So I'm going to copy my organization URL here and I'll add well-known open ID configuration. Now, once that happens, you'll see that the VCO uh, automatically fills the rest of the fields. Now, there are two options here for you to use. First of all, uh, the simplest will be a user default role. We're going to be using this first. And what this says, is every time I'm going through Okta and I'm successfully authenticated, I will become an enterprise super user. So click Save here. Make sure we save the Okta site as well. We go inside Okta and we assign some people because at the moment there is nobody assigned to this particular application. I'll assign it to myself. And that's about it. We can run a simple test to verify that everything is up and running. So as you can see here, everything is a success. Now, just to be sure, while I'll do is that I'll open a private window, ECO8, and instead of putting my username and password, I'm signing on with my identity provider. So I'll type in my domain name. Remember, um, I told you you have to configure that. This is why. Once that happens, I am brought to Okta.
already used these credentials before. That's fine. Sign in. And now I have access to the VCO as a super user. So I see all the tabs that I normally do. Now, the next question would be, OK, what if I don't want everybody to become super users, right? What if I want granular access depending on user groups? So this is where we can use the second option. So this maps different groups with different role types. So let me show you how now with the same username and password, when I log in, I just become a read-only user. So for that, I need to go inside the directory. I need to create a group. I will add it, create a read-only group. See, it's the same name as inside the VCO. I'll give it a description. Click Add Group. And then just need to add myself to it. Click Save, go back to Groups, got my read only, and I have one person in it. Now, inside the application itself, there is one small setting that you, you might need to do. And that is inside the Sign On tab. You can say, OK, I'm using uh, Groups as a filter. So now, once this is saved, I'm basically instructing Okta to provide the group that the user belongs to. And I'm matching that group name with a certain role inside the VCO. So let's do that again. So now, as by magic, I only see the monitoring tab. So that was quite quite easy, right? Remember, if you want more granular access as opposed to just defaulting to a certain role, so you can change this to any type of role you want, use this role attribute as groups and make sure you have these groups defined with the same name as listed here. One last thing I wanted to show you, which I think it's is really, really cool, is the sign-on policy. The default policy is OK, I have my credentials. They are correct. And now I have a certain access. But I can add something different. I can now say, OK, I'm only granting access if the user is using a certain device, if it's located in a certain area, or I want them to have a multi-factor authentication. So in this example, if let's say I'm usually working out of the UK, and all of a sudden, a device is trying to log in from outside the country. I can use a rule like this to specify, let's trigger an, a multi-factor authentication. Because chances are that somebody found out the username and password. And by this, I'm stopping them having access to the system. Obviously, if I'm traveling for work, I would have my authenticator, whatever that's the app itself, or SMS, or email authentication. You have all these options with, uh, with Okta. But if there was somebody else trying to break into my account, uh, they won't have access to it. Just to have a bit of fun, let's use uh, the geolocation functionality. For that, we go inside security, we go in, in networks, we add a dynamic zone. Let's call it uh, Great Britain. And inside location, we specify United Kingdom, Great Britain. Click Save. And now we're going inside the application itself. And creating a rule that specifies you access from. So if the location is in. The zone I just defined, I want to deny access. Click Save. Now let's try that again. And no surprise here, 
my access has now been denied because my IP address resides in the territory that I have just defined. And my policy says, if somebody initiates access from there, just deny it. Remember, it's really up to you if you want to go all the way to deny it or use multi-factor authentication to just validate that the request is legitimate. One last thing that I want to leave you with is the knowledge base articles. So if you watch this video and you want to follow a step-by-step -step guide uh, on how to configure the VCO or how to configure all the other identity providers that we support, the docs.vmware.com is your best friend. And this is where you will find step-by-step -step guides.